Hi, Panda Movies here. Today I'm going to explain episode 1 of a drama, action, and the survival Korean TV show Squid Game. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. Enjoy the video. The titular Squid Game TV show is Netflix's new original K-drama. The first episode is called Red Light, Green Light. The episode starts by explaining Squid Game, a children's playground game, played on a court in the shape of a squid. The opening narration explains the rules. There are two teams, the attackers and defenders. The defense goal is to prevent the attacks from entering the squid, and the attackers need to get around the defenders. The attackers start by hopping on one leg, giving the defenders an advantage. However, once they cross the neck of the squid they can move on both feet. The defender's job is then to push the attack outside the line of the squid, if they do that, the attacker pushed outside is eliminated. The attacking team has to touch a foot on the squid's head to win. This basic concept, however, is about to be massively twisted. Red Light Green Light makes it clear early on that Guy Hun is a degenerate. He sponges off his mother and blows, what little money he does have gambling on horses. He spends the morning of his daughter's birthday in the bookies just to fund her special day despite already receiving enough money for a nice mean from his mother. He does seem to get lucky, by winning 4,560,001, he even tips the cashier 10,001, but almost immediately, after promising her all kinds of treats he loses his newfound wealth, after he got pickpocketed, while being chased by some goons he already owes money to. Just like that, he has one month, to cough up all his debts, or the cost will be recouped in the form of his vital organs. He even signs in his blood to make it all official. Ai Hun decides to ask the cashier for 10,001 back as he no longer has any money. He takes what little he has left and decides to spend it on skill catches, to win his daughter a gift. A little boy sees, that he sucks at the skill catcher, and says you need to think before you do it. The boy eventually helps Guy Hun win a secret black box. Guy Hun's daughter Georgia Yeong, is adorable and smart, she obviously got this from her mother. She's careful not to upset Guy Hun, when he's forced to take her for a cheap meal instead of fried chicken as promised, and pretends to be happy about the cigarette lighter in the shape of a gun, that was in the black box he won, that Guy Hun gives her as a gift. You think he would at least check it, before giving it to her, but that would have been too smart for him. It seems George Young's mother and stepfather are well off and well adjusted, whereas in Guy Hun is neither, at least he means well. It's obvious that Guy Hun is desperate, and we have to understand he's desperate, so we understand why he'd agree to play a high-stakes game of Dakji with a random man, that he meets at the train station when going home. The man says that, if Guy Hun wins, he gets 100,001, but if he loses, he loses 100,001. Guy Hun doesn't have 100,001 to gamble, so every time he loses, which is every round, he pays the toll in a slap across the face. Before long, and after many losses, he was starting to look like Two-Face. Eventually, though, he wins a round, and just like that, he is a hundred grand better off. Now that there is real money in his hand, he's much more susceptible to the idea that there are other big money games he can get involved in. Since the salesman seems to know everything about him, including his employment history and his current debts, Guy Hun is compelled by the idea. He's happy to have made 100,001, but it's barely enough to make a dent in what he owes, and when he returns home, his mother tells him that George Yeong will be moving to the US next year. In order for her to stay, he has to prove he can support her financially. In the kicker.so, inevitably, Guy Hun calls the number on the business card that the salesman gave him, and agrees to participate. Red light, green light turns out to be the password to join in, which involves boarding a van along with the other passengers which at first glance looked like they were just tired, and sleeping but all of whom, including Guy Hun, are gassed into unconsciousness for the trip. When he wakes up, he's wearing a tracksuit labeled 456. There are 455 other players, all simultaneously waking up in towers of plain bunk beds, stacked very high. Player 001, an elderly man was sitting in his bunk bed was trying to stave off dementia by counting the participants. Guy Hun interrupts the man counting, and says that you can see how many players are here by the big lead board on the wall saying 456 players. Guy Hun is confused why the old man is there and mentions that he should be at home enter a delicious meal from his daughter-in-law or something. The old man retorts, why Guy Han was here, and if his mother was enjoy a delicious meal from her daughter-in-law. Player 067, the young woman Guy Han tripped over earlier, who presumably stole the money he won from the race was also here, and seems like is related to player 101. Player 067 has some issues with 101, an obvious gangster type who isn't thrilled about her going independent. At this point in time, a group of people enter, wearing pink overalls and masks adorned with either a square or circle, the same symbols that were on the back of the salesman's business cards. At first, the players were apprehensive and says that they drugged and kidnapped them. They even took their private possessions so how can they trust them? This is when they are each shown that they all played the Dakji game, and explains that everyone present is on the brink of financial ruin, and stand to make a pretty penny by playing six games over the next six days. 
The prize money will be accumulated in a giant piggy bank suspended from the ceiling. Everyone agrees to participate, and is led through a giant check-in process that has them climb multiple multicolored staircases up, up, and up to a game room. All the while, we get glimpses of the enigmatic figure in a black hut and mask, who one assumes is the frontman or leader, in charge of the whole operation, though he later gets a call from someone, which suggests he might have employers above him. Sangwoo, number 218, is also playing, Gaiha knows him and his mother, who was convinced he was abroad on a business trip. Red light, green light turns out, not just to be the password for the first game, but also the game itself, a version of the playground game, where you move on green, and stop still on red. They enter a large open area with a large tree, and a creepy looking girl doll at the far end. The game is simple, you must make it to the other end, whilst the doll is not looking. The doll will chant red light, green light whilst she is not looking. However, once she is finished chanting, the doll will turn around, and whoever is caught with movement, they are eliminated. Initially, everything just thinks it's a big game, excitement is in the air and some players even place side bets showing you the type of people in here are gamblers. The game begins, and the players placing side bets to see who wins first runs ahead. But there's a twist. Here, if you're eliminated from the game, you're shot to death and unfortunately for the eager guy, he stumbled when the doll finished the chant, and was immediately shot. The eliminated player falls and doesn't move. The other player, that placed a bet with him moved towards his body once the chanting started again, and noticed that he wasn't playing dead, and was literally dead. Once the participants discover this, most of them attempt to flee and are killed in masses, their corpses piling up on top of each other by the doors. The remaining players have no choice but to play along. Sangwoo helps Guy Han figure out the motion sensor, and advises him to stay behind someone else. Player 067 has the same idea, hiding behind and antagonizing 101 during the game. The game progresses with more and more players dying. Eventually, Sangwoo makes it to the other end, same as player 067. Near the end, Guy Han is getting desperate to make it further and nearly trips. As he is falling, he suddenly stops midair. It turns out player 199 caught him, preventing him from falling using just one hand. This guy be pumping iron on his days off or something. Eventually, both Guy Han and player 199 make it past the line. The time runs out, and we see the remaining players all get shot to death. Meanwhile, as the eliminated players' bloody deaths get soundtrack to a jazzy rendition of Fly Me to the Moon, the mysterious frontman sips scotch from a crystal decanter. The episode's second half offers glimpses behind the scenes, including an impressive surveillance setup and a floor illuminated with the players' headshots. They are creepy moments, but they are used sparingly, giving us just a hint of the scope of the operation. Red light, green light ends with the roof of the game room closing, as an aerial shot reveals the games are taking place in dense woodland on an island in the middle of nowhere. 